into cybersecurity, there's a ton of content out there. And if you don't know where to start, it can be overwhelming, even paralyzing. So let's fix that. Welcome to Simply Cyber, a community of tens of thousands of aspiring and active cybersecurity professionals focused on networking, knowledge sharing, and professional development. I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier, Chief Content Creator at Simply Cyber, inviting you to get the answers to your cybersecurity problems with hundreds of cybersecurity videos answering your frequently asked questions, interviewing industry experts, and live streaming daily cyber threat briefings hosted by me. Now get the stories and insights you won't find anywhere else. Hit subscribe now and dig into all the fresh content on the channel and in the community. Nothing should stop you from launching and leveling up your cybersecurity career today. All right, good morning, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We like to chill it up occasionally, right? Good morning. Today is Friday, October 13th. Ooh, spooky boo. Welcome to episode number 472 of Simply Cyber's Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. I am your host, Dr. Gerald Osier. And over the next four, 45 minutes, me, you, J-Dub, Angular, Jesse Johnson, Leon Elliott, Van Morrison, Jonathan Carpenter, all the folks over on LinkedIn, all the folks coming in from YouTube, live, first timers and long timers. We're all going to be shredding the top cybersecurity news and we're doing it with a little bit of chill today. Want to slide into the weekend just a little more relaxed. I feel like we've all been going really hard uh, the last couple months here. And, uh, you know, why not take a moment and just breathe? So I'm super pumped, super happy. We got a great show for you today. Remember that um, each episode of the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing like this one is worth half a CPE. So you will get uh, half for it, two and a half a week, 10 a month. So be sure to take a screen cap of yourself saying what's up in chat and file it away. We are going to be shredding the top cyber news stories. What does that mean? Shredding. Is shredding something you can do with cyber news? Absolutely. We're going to be tearing apart the top stories of the day, getting you prepped to know what's going on in the industry right now. And so next week, next month, you'll uh, be engaged, be able to um, deliver cyber risk reduction to your, to your stakeholders. And if you're looking to break into the industry, like so many of you are. Hey, Frank Andriuli, good to see you. Sherry, good to see you. Super pumped. You were with the uh, Ian Anderson stream last night. Guys, if you're looking to break into the industry, you need to stay current, right? And, you know, all the hard work you're putting in to break into the industry, it's just prepping you for the hard work that's going to be when you get in the industry. But when it, when it becomes normal, when that becomes standard, uh, it's not such a big deal. But the networking is excellent in here. The people are amazing. Leon Elliott, thanks so much. Thanks, Jamie Fleck. We got the uh, wet run later today. I'll talk about during the uh, stream. It is Friday, so we've got a uh, joke of the week coming. Compliments of one James McQuiggan. But before we get into the stream, let's just take a chill moment to say shout out and thanks to the stream sponsor. Start with my good friend. Start with my good friend. Eric Taylor over at Barricade Cyber. Barricade Cyber Solutions is dedicated to helping businesses from cyber attacks and recover from the damage done. Cyber attacks can cause massive issues for businesses and send dedicated hard work and business owners into turmoil. But Barricade Cyber Solutions, they know how to put a chill beat on and mitigate the damage done by cyber incidents. Throw on some Van Morrison and check them out at barricadecyber.com. Links in the description below. You're dealing with an incident, man. You want to have somebody in your corner who knows what they're doing, been there before. And that is Barricade Cyber. All right. Want to say shout out and thanks to Panopsi Security. Hey, what's up, Brandon Poole and your team? Get a partner who understands your cyber program and your business goals. King Kong with the sub. Thanks so much, King Kong. Get a partner who understands. Guys, if you're looking to take... Oh, Matthew with the uh, gifted sub. Matthew Necci, whoever gets that. Thank you so much. Love it, love it, love it. Guys, check it out. If you need help 
putting together uh, more of a, a structured program for your uh, business. Like what, you know, what are we doing next year? What's our budget look like? If your bosses are coming to you and saying like, are we prepared for ransomware? Are we prepared for whatever? Like, is this Israel Hamas thing going to affect us? Like, if you don't know how to answer any of those questions, it's okay, right? It's not, you're not expected to know everything in our industry, but if you need help, Panopsi Security is a business that has an oodle amount, which is measurable, of experience and guidance on helping you get straight now. Think of them as like a part-time CISO that can come in, be your be your your, your uh, trainer in your corner and give you the advice and guidance you need. Great stuff. Panopsi Security, love being affiliated with them. Also, Anti-Siphon Training, more about them at the mid-roll. Lee Mueller, keep your eyes on the road, my friend. Driving, team driving. All right, guys. Hopefully, everybody's got their coffee. I'm rocking the French press, French roast, double tag. I got to tell you, just from a scary point of view, it is October, Friday the 13th. Ooh, it's spooky out there. I ground the last of my French roast beans this morning. So we've got a stage three alert. Get the sirens going. Got to got to prioritize getting out to Costco today and loading up with another 15 pounds of uh, <laughs> French roast coffee. All right, guys. I'm super, super excited. If you are uh, live with us, let us see what a shout out. Hashtag team live. If it is your first time, if this is your first Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, whether someone told you you stumbled upon it or you accidentally clicked in here and you're kind of stuck in here because you're like, what is going on? Welcome to the show. Do me a solid. Hashtag first timer in chat. We love to welcome our first timers. Now do me a favor. Let's sit back and relax. Get your favorite drink of choice right now. And let's let the cool sounds of the hot news wash over us in an awesome wave. I will see all of you chill cats at the mid roll. From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. These are the cybersecurity headlines for Friday, October 13th, 2023. I'm Rich Straffolino. Microsoft thwarts large-scale ransomware attack. The Redmond giant announced that its Defender for Endpoint solution helped mitigate a large-scale remote encryption attempt by the ransomware group Akira, otherwise known as Storm 1567. This started in early June 2023 against an anonymous industrial enterprise. The attackers attempted to target devices not onboarded onto Defender, but a new automatic attack disruption capability from Microsoft prevented breached accounts from accessing endpoints and other resources in the network. Nice. Microsoft identified containing compromised user accounts as a key way to disrupt these types of attacks. Cool. All right. So this is really cool. Akira Ransomware. Um, you know, I'm not super familiar with them, but they're ransomware. So basically they get on boxes, they move, la you know, they get onto servers, they move laterally through a domain and start, you know, crushing boxes with encryption. Uh, shout out to the mods, by the way, Jenny Housley, Kimberly, Jesse, Justin, Joel, Aaron, Eric, probably missing some. BSEC, of course, uh, toss a coin to your Witcher. Thanks mods for being here today and every single day. You guys are great. All right, so check it out, the Akira ransomware. This is pretty cool. So the story is Microsoft Defender thwarts the large scale attack. It's a little bit more nuanced than that. Uh, you can see through the infograph timeline here, essentially a vulnerable internet facing server got compromised, okay? It was not properly secured. It did not have Microsoft Defender for Endpoint on it. I know some, listen, some people in our industry think Microsoft Defender for Endpoint is trash. It's easy to circumvent. It's easy to evade. It's easy to disable. Okay, still, even if it is, it is more than nothing. The server that is in the initial infection of this situation, the initial access was not protected properly. Threat actors get it, okay? This is actually pretty cool what's about to happen. Threat actors get it, and then they start, they do LSAS proc dump right in the middle there. You see this LSAS proc dump right here in the middle? Guys, if you have done the uh, SOC analyst lab, the Eric Capuano lab, um, where you have Sliver, and a vulnerable Windows host pushing up to Lima Charlie for EDR. And uh, and you've done that. It's a lab that I have on my Simply Cyber uh, YouTube channel. You do the same exact thing here. You do an LSAS proc dump. It's the same exact technique. Well, the 
threat actors got the creds. So now they own a box and they got a bunch of creds and they're feeling themselves. They're like, oh man, we are going to town. We're about to get paid, boy. Great cash, homie. And then what happens is it starts to move laterally and the accounts they're using to install the malware on each of these boxes, um, the, the boxes themselves have Defender for Endpoint on them, which detects that there's a problem, sees the accounts that are being used to uh, disseminate and Microsoft's, you know, basically um, control stops the installs. And it doesn't show it in this uh, timeline, but it appears that they actually uh, lock down the user accounts too, which would be outside of Microsoft Defender for Endpoint because the Defender for Endpoint is an endpoint uh, solution, right? So that's for the computer, not the user account. But I'm sure if you're using a Microsoft ecosystem, there is ways to... Um, you know, detect that ransomware is being or malware is being installed onto this endpoint. So stop that. Then look at the user account that's being used to install it and identify that is likely compromised. And then reach out to uh, Azure AD or Entra or whatever the hell, sorry, Kennedy, whatever they're calling it now, and disable those accounts. So essentially, the threat actors. I mean, they didn't exactly dox themselves, but they kind of doxed themselves and burned all their compromised user accounts because they were using them install malware and, and Defender for Endpoint caught it. I love it. I love it. You know, but this calls for a finfrock. Um, what would we say? It's not crypto. Uh, it's, it's not crypto. It's uh, uh, centralized control management. I'm a crypto Sim evangelist. centralized crypto love management. It, love it, love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. That was a little janky what I just did, but basically centralized control management. You know, going all in on one e ecosystem does have its benefits. Way to go, Microsoft. Former Uber CISO files appeal. Earlier this year, a court convicted former Uber CISO Joe Sullivan on obstructing justice and concealing a felony related to a 2016 data breach at the company. Sullivan's legal team has filed an appeal with the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. The filing called his conviction profoundly flawed and said it threatened the use of bug bounties by enterprises. Many in cybersecurity expressed concerns with Sullivan's sentencing, as at the time, he acted with full approval of then Uber CEO Travis Kalanick and the company's legal team, yet bore sole legal responsibility. The government must respond to the appeal by November 9th, and oral arguments are projected to start in Q2 2024. All right, so this is interesting. Um, so really quick, just to kind of catch you all up, Joseph Sullivan, uh, really well-recognized information security professional in the industry, was CISO at Uber. You may have heard of it, the ride-sharing app uh, company, uh, when they were hacked by hackers and basically extorted. And the, the crux of the problem is they are a publicly traded company. They should have disclosed that there was a data breach. And instead... They made a deal with the hackers to pay them an amount of money and promise, I know it sounds ridiculous, promise that they wouldn't tell anyone. They made a deal with criminals to promise that they wouldn't tell anyone. Well, surprise, uh, the criminals took the money and then told everyone. Uh, and when it came out, uh, you know, it was like SEC violations and all of Uber's execs got pulled in and then they all pointed at Joseph Sullivan and like, it's like one of those ones where they're all standing in a line and they're like the guilty party stepped forward and like all the executives took one step back and Joseph Solon was like still standing forward. He's like, ah, right. And this gets into all of the nuances of is a CISO responsible for cyber um, for a, a, an incident, right? Is a CISO responsible for a data breach or are they um, just in uh, there to guide and inform the CIO or the business, and it's up to them to make the decisions. This is an age old uh, argument, for lack of a better term, in our industry. We could do a whole show on it. If we maybe jaw jack and we could talk about it. But, um, anyways, he was found guilty, convicted. Uh, now, here's the weird thing he did not serve any jail time, no like behind bars time. I forget exactly what the deal was, but it's like 18 months of like probation or something like that. I mean, it wasn't nothing but he didn't have to go to jail, right? So that was the thing. So now he's like appealing his conviction. I don't know why, honestly. It says that, um, you know, it was based on tenuous theories and criminalizes bug bounty programs. Like the tenuous theory thing, fine, I guess. Like maybe he's, Joseph Sullivan shouldn't have trouble finding work, right? Like the only reason I could think you would want to appeal this is so you don't have a felony charge on your record because whenever you apply for a job, 
you have to disclose that you're a felon, right? But you're Joseph Sullivan, former C CISO at Uber. People know who you are. Like you kind of bypass. Um, you're, he, this guy's not standing in line at like a job fair handing out resumes, right? So I don't know what that is. Then they say criminalizing the use of bug bounty programs. That's a little righteous for him to want to do that. Um, bug bounty programs and vulnerability disclosure programs have been really well uh, built out at this point. Integrity is a big one in Europe. Hacker One is a big one in the United States. Bug Crowd, another one in the United States. Some organizations host their own, like uh, the DOD, Department of Defense in the United States. Um, Hackasat, you may be familiar with. So I don't know how Joseph Sullivan's uh, conviction is going to lead to criminalizing the use of bug bounty. So if anything, this story piques my interest simply because the 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 surface level explanation of what's going on here doesn't make sense to me like what's what like you, you didn't serve jail time like there there must be some personal negative consequence happening to joseph sullivan for him to want to pursue this i have to assume and if i had to guess straight cash homie has something to do with straight cash homie right okay so now like tinfoil hat jerry really quickly uh because by the way, I don't I don't prep or research these stories in advance, so this is like me just flying straight off the hip here uh, on a train bound for glory. If I had to guess, Joseph Sullivan may have some stock or shares or options worth an ass load of money that's tied up with Uber that somehow becoming a felon violates or um, dismisses or something like that. Like there's definitely something financial that he no longer has access to because of this. And if he comes out and says, well, I'm, I'm appealing because I want to get my straight cash, homie, um, that, that doesn't really win the hearts and minds of the population, right? So criminalizing the use of bug bounty, that seems a little bit more appropriate. I've never met Joseph Sullivan. I'm not making a, uh, a personal um, uh, assessment of his, you know, personality or attitudes or anything like that. It just, to me, you know, like, like say you got a, a, a speeding ticket, right? You got pulled over for speeding or whatever, and you got wrote, written a warning, right? So there's no financial penalty. You don't got to go to court, none of that stuff. Are you going to appeal the warning? It doesn't make sense, right? And you're like, no, I think it criminalizes people who are doing, uh, two miles an hour over the speed limit. Um, when it's not actually posted correctly or something. You know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't seem to make sense to me. All right, hot takes. Toddy Cat Group targets telcos. Researchers at Checkpoint identified this actively run campaign impacting telco providers across Pakistan, Vietnam, Kazakhstan, and Uzbekistan. The attackers use spear phishing messages with malicious attachments to load a wide variety of malware. The researchers noted TidyCat uses somewhat disposable malware, meaning that it uses many different versions of a custom tool to try to evade detection. Ultimately, the campaign attempts to install a backdoor through an emailed zip file attachment, and from there, further load malware. Oh my god. Hold on one second, I hit the wrong button. FTX hackers. All right, so a couple things here. One, way to go mid-journey. I love, I love this. You know, Cat GPT. Shall we play a game? Cat GPT, this is like his jam right here. AI generated cat photos. I, I don't know if he's in chat right now, but he's definitely giddy up on this. Uh, second of all, um, dude, if, educate your end users. In 2023, nobody should be emailing zip archives. What are you doing? And if, if for an end user, <gasps> what, what are you doing, man? No one's sending zip archives as attachments like just make that make that the like when you walk into the building and there's like a tv showing like the weather the news and then like some message from cybersecurity make it that no one is sending you zip archives bro funky monk with a, a squad member dr gerald mods and sc community always look forward to catching the waves wow. love you so so much uh funky monk thanks so much uh dude okay so first of all, they're targeting a population that's just mind numbing. Okay. The thing I want to share with people who are looking to break into the industry, they said that they're using disposable malware and that they use different versions of the malware to avoid detection. Okay. Don't think that this is like some kind of crazy technique. All right. Let me show you what's up. 
David Bianco's Pyramid of Pain. This is a really well-known, well-recognized, uh, roundly accepted thing in our industry. So if you don't know about this, definitely add it to your repertoire. This is called the uh, Pyramid of Pain, David Bianco. The lower, well, the higher up you go, the more painful it is, frankly, to a threat actor to change their behaviors and stuff like that, okay? You see at the bottom where it says hash values? When I take a malware, right? When I take a piece of malware, it's just code. And I add a new uh, carriage return to it, or I add a comment or anything, anything to the source code, it becomes a different file. The hash value changes. It is ridiculously trivial to make malware once and then make it look like many different malware. So much, in fact, that I have seen um, malware that literally was automated to change itself every 60 seconds, okay? So when they're saying disposable malware, uh, it changes every time or whatever, right here, disposable to evade detection. The only kind of detection that they're avoiding is static signature-based detection. As you can see from the Pyramid of Pain, there's no way in hell that they are changing the TTPs on all the malware. They're not doing like, you know, an LSAS proc dump, right? And then they're not, then they're using Mimikatz. Like they're, they're not going to develop a whole new set of techniques. They're not going to jump to a different uh, behavior on the MITRE ATT&CK framework for every piece of malware, unless they are doing that. And then you better have a freaking fortress full of software developers, because now you're talking about massive amounts of rewrite, rework, re-everything, which is why it's at the top of the pyramid of pain, because it would be incredibly painful for threat actors to have to do that and expensive. Okay. Great cash, homie. So when they say disposable, I, I have zero doubt in my mind, what they're talking about is slightly changing the source and recompiling it or, you know, whatever. It's still a zip freaking archive. This should be easy to stop. Um, here's a little infographic, you know, zip archive runs an executable DLL dynamic link library. It could overwrite an existing one. Um, or it could just be a new one. They stick on there. <sighs> most normal defensive mechanisms in most normal modern businesses should be able to protect from this. Okay. This is not a good behavior. Like your, your firewall or your email gate, we should not allow this through. Now, I just want to point out really quickly that even though I'm flipping out on people who allow zip archives through their email gateway and people who are uneducated enough or unaware to launch an, a zip archive out of an email from someone they don't know, it is possible for you to put the zip archive on a Dropbox or a Google Drive or an Office 365 OneDrive and link to it. Right, so you can send the email without the zip actually attached, but still have the same kind of workflow of the victim clicking on something, pulling down that zip archive, and launching it. So there are some techniques to get around that, but for crying out loud, this particular one, not a good look. Not a good look. E educate your end users. Let them know it's not so much about toddy cat. It's about not running zip archives that are attached. Please try to move funds. Last November, when the cryptocurrency exchange FTX declared bankruptcy, it also got hit by a theft of over $400 million in cryptocurrency. No word yet on what party orchestrated the attacks. However, the blockchain analytics firm Elliptic released a new report showing that the attackers began moving the funds across blockchains in a seeming attempt to cash out the funds without being tracked. The report claims the attackers showed ties to Russian cybercrime groups, moving some funds to a pool often used by Russian-linked threat actors. This comes after almost 10 months of inactivity. Initially, the thieves converted stolen stablecoins to more liquid cryptocurrencies and then attempted to use mixer services to launder the funds, but stopped activity at the end of 2022. There is no indication this new activity is linked to the trial of FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried. All right, a couple things. One really quick one. This is Wired.com. And um, just coincidentally, they have it as an ad in here. This is Jason Street. He's a pen tester. Um, physical security. If you're into physical, this has nothing to do with the FTX story. If you're into physical security, uh, Jason's a great follow. He's a great, this wired video I've actually watched. It's on YouTube. Uh, he's got lots of videos of him, like basically doing physical pen testing into banks and stuff. Um, so anyways, I just, since he's here, you should know about him. He's kind of, uh, he's kind of, um, 
an elder of the infosec community okay like he he's he, you recognize him he's around all right so this story uh remember ftx um that you know sham bs crypto exchange sam bankman fried the generous billionaire who was basically siphoning money off and giving it to his um own company alameda research run by his girlfriend who didn't know what she was doing uh and they were basically just living you know, living like living large, frankly, in the Bahamas, uh, spending other people's money with little regard for the havoc and chaos that they were ensuing. And, and you know, long term, I mean, pensions liquidated, retirements liquidated, homes liquidated, scum. So this guy's going to go to jail. All right. But on the day of the bankruptcy, when FTX imploded, uh, a bunch of money disappeared. At the time, I speculated that he was, you know, FTX, uh, Sam Bankman Fried and the FTX people were basically cashing out their own money, right? Like, why, why, why would it not be that, right? Like, you have access to all the keys, you know, you're going under. Why not basically siphon off a bunch of money? So when you do get out of jail, never, you'll be able to uh, cash that money out, right? So it, Apparently, it looks now that it was actually Russian-linked money launderers, and it's basically they're they're attributing it this because of the wallets that are being used, or wallets that have been used in Russia, uh, cyber crime, crypto crime in the past, right? So that's the linkage. Um, also, I want to point out really quickly, Andy Greenberg is the author of this. I love Andy Greenberg's work. He wrote. Um, Oh my God, Sandworm about Russia APT 28, I think. And um, he wrote Tracers in the Dark, which is much more tied to crypto and uh, crypto tracking and stuff like that. I, I'm currently, it's on my must read list. If anyone in chat has read Tracers in the Dark, I'd love uh, your thoughts in chat. I'd love to know if it's a good read. Okay, so here's the deal really quickly. It doesn't matter. Someone stole the money. We're probably not going to get it back. I, the one thing that I find uh, suspect in this whole story is um, like like Russia must have been in there or this Russian crime gr group. They must have been inside of FTX's environment to, to be able to detonate it on the day of bankruptcy. Listen, you don't threat actors, criminals. I don't care how skilled you are. You don't wake up on Tuesday and say, oh, it looks like FTX is going to go bankrupt tomorrow. Like, let's cash them out. Like an operation, um, the skill needed to do all this, um, the timing of it all, it doesn't work that quickly, at least in my opinion, right? So you'd already have to be in there. You'd already have to have some compromised accounts or access and stuff like that to then be able to move the money before the money gets seized, right? Because that's the deal, right? All this assets could have been frozen uh, by law enforcement or by federal government or whatever, the Bahamas. Uh, so. I don't know. It just seems sus, 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 sus. I, I'm not suggesting FTX has any relationship with Russia or uh, criminal uh, activity in Russia, but it just seems sus. Okay. All right. Ray Tierney saying that Traces in the Dark is the best book read in 2023. That is a that is definitely a um, hell of a recommendation. I like that. Thank you. All right. Let's keep going. And now a word from our sponsor, Hyperproof. <laughs> Is your company scaling? Do you need to quickly add more compliance frameworks but don't know where to start? Hyperproof has you covered. Hyperproof is a risk and compliance management platform that can help you manage compliance at scale. With Hyperproof, you can quickly add new frameworks, crosswalk controls between frameworks, view your risk posture, and manage your skills all in one place. Visit hyperproof.io to get started today. Yeah. So Ray Tierney, I, I have listened to Welcome to Video on Darknet Diaries. And, and and that I mean, that's that's all I know about Tracers in the Dark, frankly. Josh Mason sent me a copy of Tracers in the Dark, signed, by the way, which is pretty dope. Um, so I don't know if we had any first timers in here. I didn't see it go through, but I'm I'm super chill Jerry today, uh, which is like unbelievably satisfying to to feel the way I feel right now. But it is the mid roll. So let's do this. What's up, Jack Scott? Hey, everybody. Jack Scott with the blue badging up in here. Nick Barker with the blue badging. Kimberly with the blue badging. You guys, you guys rock. Let's do some mid-roll action.
All right, everybody. Thank you all so very much. You guys are the best. Absolutely the best. What a, what a way to start a Friday. Thanks to the stream sponsors, Barricade and Panopsi. Also want to say shout out and love to Anti-Siphon Training. If you're going to Wild West Hacking Fest next week like I am, you know already how awesome Black Hills Information Security, Anti-Siphon Training, and Velda Lemke, who's over Anti-Siphon Training, how awesome she is, and the architect behind Wild West Hacking Fest. Guys, Anti-Siphon Training is disrupting the traditional cybersecurity training industry by providing high quality, cutting edge education to everyone, everyone, regardless of financial position. They give students practical hands-on opportunities taught by industry leaders, and it's just straight dope. Go to the link in the description below. Go to training, go to pay what you can training. Look at their calendar of activities. I, myself, really want to take this API security testing one on October 31st, Halloween, noon to 4 p.m. I will be doing um, dad stuff because it is Halloween, so I might, I'm not sure what my availability is, but I'm just telling you, $0, $25, $500, you choose your adventure. Anti-Siphon Training, giddy up on it, thanks for the sponsorship. Guys, do me another favor. If you are getting value from the stream, if you get value from the Simply Cyber community, if you're entertained at all, do me a favor, hit the like button. It's the simplest way to say thank you. It's the simplest way to pay it forward to our community. The likes don't matter to me as far as the number. The quantification of it doesn't matter. I don't go back and look and say, oh, let's get 300 likes today. What I care about is that when we hit a certain amount, the YouTube algorithm triggers and it goes out and it shows this stream to other people interested in cybersecurity. And that's how you people, many of you have found Simply Cyber, Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. That's how we build our community. That's how we network. Pay it forward. Hit the like button. Help people out. Guys, want to do a shout out to the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Super pumped. Brian Upchurch, a.k.a. Ion Q, had the baton yesterday. Great work, Brian. Brian, if you can tag somebody in chat. Guys, if you want, if you want to supercharge your LinkedIn feed and grow your personal network with like-minded cybersecurity professionals, listen up. Go on LinkedIn, search for the hashtag Simply Cyber Community Challenge and connect with the people posting, comment on the posts, connect with the people in the comments. Because you're commenting, other people will connect with the people in the comments, which is you. You'll get caught up in the Peloton. Multiple people in chat will testify that this works. Believe me, this isn't a, a ruse or a trick or some bull crap. This is a legit way for us to weaponize LinkedIn, basically. And what will happen is you'll A, build your network, and B, you'll actually get your feed full of cybersecurity resources, supportive comments, lots of wins. It's a freaking win, win, win. It's awesome. So do me a favor, I on Q, tag somebody in chat, and everybody else, go search for that hashtag and giddy up on it. All right, guys, it is Friday, which is Friday's joke of the week, formerly Grayson's joke of the week. James McQuiggan is currently um, uh, stepping in for Grayson. J joke of the week from James McQuiggan. Oh, he, he, you know, many of you may know that James McQuiggan, who I'm speaking with at Wild West Tekken Fest next week, is also a college professor because he's teaching right now. He told me that next week, He's actually going to be taking his students to tour a soda factory, but the students are pretty concerned because he thinks they might give them a pop quiz. All right. So pop quiz at the soda factory. You West, you uh, uh, Midwest uh, people know what I'm talking about. Giddy up on that. Uh, so LOL. Thanks so much. Let's keep on rolling back into the news. And oh, let's share some wins really quickly. Chris Garcia just passed the CCNA and going through the GRC course. Congratulations on crushing that CCNA, man. Love it, love it, love it. All right, um, just a couple more. Angie Yarbrough, this has been my first week in cyber boot camp. It's good, so much to learn. Well, Angie, super pumped for you. Hope you're getting the information you want. Uh, Priceless Pancake testifying about the value of the Simply Cyber Community Challenge. Love it, love it, love it. 
Uh, Jax is in chat. So definitely check out Jack Scott, Eric McDuffie's podcast, Two Cyber Chicks. Um, somebody please drop a link in there. Uh, Lupe Peterman, longtime member of the Simply Cyber community. I haven't seen Lupe in a minute, though. She's probably super busy doing GRC stuff. But uh, yeah, shout out to everybody. We have a great community here. Let's keep going. Uh, Alex is asking if my keynote talk at Charleston B Sides will be recorded. Uh, I don't know yet. I haven't confirmed. Um, I, I will ask. Um, casually, Joseph, who's in chat, has agreed to like film me, and I was going to wear a microphone. So I guess the short answer is yes, it'll be filmed. The quality of the filming is TBD. U.S. sees record data breaches. According to a new report from the nonprofit Identity Theft Resource Center, the U.S. saw 2,116 reported data breaches in 2023. This set a new annual record, and there's three months left to go in the year. The previous high came back in 2021 with 1,862 breaches. While the number of breaches jumped significantly, total victims will likely decrease in the year. The ITRC estimates 234 million victims in 2023, at least so far, and that's well short of the 425 million victims from last year. Data breaches from zero-day exploits saw the biggest rise on the year, up 1,620%. Four of the top 10 biggest breaches in Q3 came as a result of the MoveIt vulnerability. Yeah, of course. Okay. All right. I came in like a all right way to go us Woo! smashing records way to go we're number one we're number one united states continuing to push the the boundary of record breaking uh with a new data breach record way to go um there's no question right i mean it's like it, it the move it breach was massive okay um <laughs> you know what's funny just to age myself a little bit and anyone in here with um you know, more, like more than 10 years of industry experience, 15 years of industry experience. Dude, it used to be like when there was a data breach, just a data breach. It was like front page news, you know, interrupting this broadcast to bring a special news bulletin. The target breach, uh, which I want to say was probably like 2013. Let me let me just Google this one. Yeah, 2013. I'm such a nerd. Um, 2013 target breach. I remember when the target breach happened and people were like, oh my God, will Target ever recover? Ah, like stop everything. We've got to rethink how we do work. And now it's like US breaches, uh, data breach record blows up again. And we're just like, mm. yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's just, it's just funny how we've normalized and become almost desensitized to this. Uh, 234 victims in the breaches. That is an A load of people. 425 million impacted last year. I'm sure there's a lot of dupli duplication. Um, you know, as many of you, um, like myself, I have like multiple identity theft protections running concurrently. Um, the one thing I don't like about this story, like, well, hold on. How do you use this story practically? Go in, grab some links. If you're doing kind of an awareness training, um, I'm actually doing a, um, I'm doing a very large uh, awareness training um, next two weeks from now. Like when I say large, um, like tens of thousands of people at an organization, I'm, I'm doing their uh, annual awareness training, uh, which is super cool. Uh, I will, I will be updating my slides to include this as a current state of situation. Like, Bro, here are hard numbers. This is what's happening today. You that's how I would that's how I'm going to use it. I recommend you use it in a similar way. Uh one thing I don't like about this, anybody that kind of scratches the surface and goes an inch deep on this one, what are we talking about here, dude? Cyber attacks remain the most common cause of breaching. Phishing attacks, the most attack uh, popular attack vector followed by zero day exploits. Um like, what do you mean cyber attacks? Like, they're all cyber attacks. Like, what? Like, what? What's the other? Like, I guess, like, uh, I'd have to imagine what they're talking about besides cyber attacks is, uh, like, you know, throwing away PII or throwing away data in a dumpster and not shredding it correctly. Uh, but in 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 2023, guy, I mean, like, cyber attacks is like 99.999% the most common cause of a data breach, right? Unless actually, you know what? Okay, I stand corrected as I'm thinking about this. Again, I don't do research beforehand. Misconfigured um, 
re, uh, misconfigured systems like a S3 database open to the public when it shouldn't be. That would not be a cyber attack per se if people were to access um, a leaky exposed, exposed database. But in reality, we're splitting hairs here. That's not really a cyber attack because you don't have to like execute any type of cyber exploit in order to access a publicly facing data repo. But you could you could qualify that is a cyber attack because it's unauthorized access of a resource and you're pulling it. So I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, this is a this is one of those good annual, big, beefy statistical things that you can grab up and make, you know, pie charts, bar charts, donut graphs, whatever kind of visual candy you want in order to make the business um, eat it, right? Like that that's the deal. We as practitioners cannot walk in to the business. Like, I'm sorry, I'm going to go off on a tangent now. Okay. We as the business, and this is a best practice for all of you, we cannot walk into the business and say, listen, Zero day exploits have an uptick in activity and phishing attacks with zip archives uh, mailed through um, without the email gateway stopping them is resulting in massive amounts of cyber risk and data breach. Like the business is literally going to be like, I'm not listening to you anymore. Right. So what you really need to do is distill this down into something that's meaningful. And when you're dealing with, uh, where, 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 where? When you're dealing with things like 1,620%, right? That's a huge, huge increase. Zero day attacks, 1,620%. One slide, one slide, all red, right? Make the whole background red. Make the font like 180. Make the, make the font size 180. Make the font white on a red background and write 1,620%. That's the whole slide, okay? <clears throat> throw that up and people are going to be like, what? Like everybody can appreciate what the heck 1,620% increase is, right? Maybe you put an up arrow on it and then you've got their attention and then you can speak, don't speak technical, but you can speak to them about, Hey, like we've got, a, we've got some really issue, real big issues. There's a 1,620% increase. That is how you communicate to the business. Simple, punchy, visually stimulating. That's what's up. X claims to remove hundreds of Hamas affiliated accounts. In a response to demands from EU industry chief Thierry Breton, X CEO Linda Yaccarino claimed the social network, formerly known as Twitter, removed hundreds of Hamas linked accounts. It also either removed or added contextual labels on thousands of pieces of content. Under the EU's Digital Services Act, online platforms have increased responsibilities to address content that risks public safety. The Financial Times' sources say these measures may not be enough, saying the EU launched an investigation into how X hosted misinformation on the Hamas attacks on Israel. Yeah, so I'm sorry. The um, obviously this Hamas Palestine Israel. Um, <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, it is uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month. That's right. So definitely an opportunity to do that. Thanks. Thanks for your cynicism, Eric Taylor. <laughs> um, all right, so guys, uh, the Palestine Hamas thing, you know, anytime a new conflict breaks out, there's a there's a rush to uh not woo uh the the public, but you know, get public sentiment. Oh, thank you very much. Uh get public sentiment. We've we've already we've already got um someone in chat, uh B sec went ahead and made the slide for me. Thank you, B sec. Uh so there you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh! Hey. <laughs> All right. So there, there's a race to uh, control. Hold on. Where's my... Um... Oh, here it is. There's a race to control public sentiment, public opinion. One way or the other, I'm not making a uh, political position on Hamas and Israel. Um, I know there is a lot of emotionally charged content being put out. Um, I went on Twitter earlier today, and I mean, you see 13-year-old, uh, I saw a 13-year-old female uh, Palestinian uh, speaking, uh, you know, to a, a large population of people, um, trying to plead for, uh, you know, um, an end to what's going on. Um, you know, there's been all sorts of like baby-related stuff that's been really, really uh, devastating. So 
I, I don't know what disinformation, what's legit, what's disinformation, what's misinformation. This is an absolute uh, weaponized uh, social media platform to control narratives. Uh, there are powerful people in powerful places who want to suppress certain narratives and perspectives, suppress certain um, activities that are really happening on the ground. And there's others who want, you know, the other side of it. So, um, you know, with this, I mean, Hamas did launch like 7,000 rockets into Israel. So like, let's not pretend they didn't in, initi uh, initiate this conflict. Uh, but the EU is asking X, not asking, the EU is telling X to basically ban these accounts um, or else. I don't know what or else looks like, I guess maybe blocking Twitter altogether in the European Union. I don't know if that's a best practice simply because a lot of people rely on Twitter in order to communicate, share, share information, get out there uh, versus going through corporate controlled news media outlets, which do filter um, what stories go on the air and which ones don't. Um, this is definitely a major issue. Um, and, and it's a bigger issue than just Hamas, Israel, right? There's, there's NATO, um, there's U.S. support, there is BRICS, right? Iran is going to become part of BRICS uh, in, in the new year. So there, there's a lot to go through with this one. Uh, we will see where it goes. Um, terrible, terrible, um, global conflict out there. Um, just in general, it's a, it's a, it's a sad, it's, it sucks. Apple fixes iOS kernel zero days. Last week, Apple released patches for current iOS versions to fix two actively exploited zero day vulnerabilities. It's now backported those patches to fix vulnerabilities on older versions of the OS. One zero day was a privilege escalation in the XNU kernel, and the other came from a heap buffer overflow within the libvpx codec library. Microsoft and Google already released patches to address the same vulnerability, and CISA added both of these to the known exploited vulnerabilities catalog. So far in 2023, Apple patched 18 actively exploited zero days on iOS and macOS. That's cool. Alameda. All right, so here's the deal. And I'm going to uh, be a little cynical here. Do I have a cynical Jerry? Um, I don't really think there's a cynical Jerry emote, but uh, oh, by the way, we have an Elon emote since we talked about X. All right, so a little cynical here. Um, so Apple, I don't know, man, like older iPhones, older iPads, I feel like they don't, they like fall apart, not fall apart, but they like, um, they're almost like designed for the battery to suck after two years and for the the size of the operating system load to be thick uh, fatter than the ability for the iPhone to hold it. I don't know. Like Apple has figured out and cracked the code on uh, selling a wonderful piece of tech that is obsolete in two years somehow, right? And the new one just has a better camera, but somehow the one you own sucks and you have to spend another thousand dollars. I don't know how Apple does it, uh, but they've made lots of money doing it. Okay. Here's the deal. If you're running an older phone that can't handle the newest operating system, iOS 16 or 17 or whatever, you're not really typically getting back backwards support for security fixes. We see this all the time with like Microsoft Windows, right? Like Windows 7's end of life. They're not, they're not um, patching stuff like that. But sometimes when there is a really gross vulnerability that's being actively exploited, Vendors will put in the money, put in the effort, put in the time, right? To pat to back patch it, right? To basically support an end of life piece of tech. And that's what's happened here. So whatever this vulnerability is, CVE 2023-42824 must have been something nasty because they've allowed a back patch to be implemented, which was not free, right? Apple had to pay developers to back patch this. So the TLDR here is if you um, if you're running old you know Apple stuff, this is a good opportunity to educate your end users uh, if you want to on kind of end of life tech and how it's not supported. But this is an opportunity to back patch. Um, you could do that. You got to be you got to be not careful with this, but um, you've got to do it in a non technical way. This does appear to be somewhat related to the WebP vulnerability uh, that we covered a couple weeks ago. This is the big one that um, Google did for Chrome. And then it came out that it was bigger than just Chrome. It, 
It was actually in the WebP library uh, that gets used in a lot of technology. Um, I was actually kind of surprised that the WebP vulnerability wasn't a bigger story exploit-wise. Um, I went in and told my Citadel cadets, I'm like, you're going to hear about this. This is going to be wild. Uh, and now, fortunately, they probably don't remember, but I feel like I was uh, crying wolf. You really got to pick your battles when you cry uh, that something's going to be mad if. Uh, in the Apple one, this is libvp. Oh, no, no. This is uh, on Google. Whatever. Opportunity, back patch. If you're running old I, uh, iPhone tech, don't sleep on patching it, right? Because you could be vulnerable. Research allegedly paid bribes to Chinese officials. Back in 2020, China froze access to Alameda Research trading accounts on the exchanges OKX and Hoibi in China. At the time, those accounts held assets worth roughly $1 billion. In the fraud trial of FTX founder Sam Bankman Fried, former Alameda co CEO Carolyn Ellison testified that her co CEO Sam Trabucchio and Bankman Fried told her to make crypto transfers of up to $150 million to unfreeze these accounts. Ellison later discovered these payments went to Chinese officials, presumably as bribes to unfreeze the accounts. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Cyber. All right. So, no surprise, right? Oh, like there's large amounts of money flying around and people are committing, uh, are taking bribes in order to uh, do stuff. Yeah. Okay. Someone got paid $150 million to unlock accounts that were frozen. The, uh, in the United States, um, the FBI can freeze funds. <coughs> um, I think the Department of Justice can freeze funds, like basically your bank account, right? Like, as much as we like to think that it, you know it's all about being agile and cool and 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 you know understanding how to operate business, if you freeze someone's money, you cripple them from being able to do things. In this case, there was a billion dollars worth of money that was frozen. For fifteen percent of that, they got access back to it. I don't know. I mean, fifteen percent. I mean that that's like a haircut in order to. Uh, it's like it's a it's a straight up bribe, right? You want a billion dollars? Give us 15%. Straight cash, homie. That's all that is. Straight cash, homie. I personally have not been following the Alameda Research, uh, Sam Bakeman Freed, FTX uh, trial. Uh, I'm just waiting for it to end, and then I'm going to watch some type of recap video on it just because of the way my time is. That That's more of a desirable way to consume uh, the information. But I love it. I love right now. Do you see how uncomfortable Caroline looks right here? Right, Caroline Ellison, you can't steal, you can't steal billions of dollars from people and and get away with it. Like this is how you should look. This is how you should feel. It's ridiculous. The two of them ruined so many people. I know she's working with law enforcement to get a lighter sentence, but I hope she does. I hope justice is served. I do hope that they get some of the money back. But as we covered in the story earlier, uh, the Russians. Um, got some of that money but um yeah this doesn't surprise me guys big money people with big money you know like they're they're in, they're entangled in bribes and 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 extort you know like i don't know that's a little bit of a uh uh um, tinfoil hat guy too right there but all right if, if anyone is following this in chat um like following this trial, like particularly following this trial, let me know in chat because uh, you'll be the one that I regularly que uh, query uh, for updates. You'll basically be like the uh, the reporter, like you're the simply cyber, um, you're the simply cyber correspondent. Uh, if anyone is following it, I'm not asking anyone to go follow it, but if you're already doing it, uh, let me know in chat. All right, All right, that's going to do it for the news today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Before you go, I want to remind everybody that at 4 p.m. today, 4 p.m. today, Simply Cyber Con, we're doing a wet run. We've got uh, track one on the Simply Cyber YouTube channel, track two on the SC Cafe channel, which is the other channel that I have stood up and will be getting going on uh, 2024. A wet run. What we're doing is we're confirming... The Zooms work, the streams work, the um, the Discord bots work. If you are involved in the Simply CyberCon, please try to be available for four o'clock today. I, I I I asked people if they were available. I tried multiple times to get a time that worked for as many people as possible. This is what we settled on. 
there will not be any like talks or anything, but I will be on air, um, you know, sharing a deck, making sure that the share works, making sure that you can hand the ball off. It's basically a dry run for the tech stack. The easiest way to do it is to just do it. So that's what's up. So if you're available at four o'clock, please go. It's called a wet run, not a dry run, because there will be beers involved. All right, guys, if you were here just for the news, thank you so much. I want to say shout out to Zach Choate, recent first timer and new Simply Cyber community baton holder. Welcome to the party, pal, Zach Choate. All right. So the wet run show up. Show up and, um, you know, I'm just going to kick the streams off. I, basically, what I'm looking for with the wet run is like, can you view it? Is the audio sound right? Can we move people in and out of the Zoom room that are, you know, whatever? And we'll use Discord to kind of coordinate and talk and stuff like that. All right. So that's going to do it. If you were here just for the news, thank you all so very much. Have a wonderful, yes, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you, Angular. 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, here is, I'll just share this. This is a link to the wet run on track one. And then, um, let me do this. Um, oh my God, here we go. Here is a link to the Track two, wet run. Got to dig for this one. All right. All right, so if you were here just for the news, thank you very much. Have a wonderful weekend. All the best. Shout out to all of you for being amazing. Mark Louderback, Sherry, Axiom Brevity, Nick Barker, Luke Canfield, Jack Scott, Kimberly, as far as jaw jacking goes, let me look at my schedule really quickly, please. Um, one second, please. Talk amongst yourselves. I got to just check something. I got some dynamic variables going on right now. All right, if you um, allow me uh, a minute, I can just give me one minute, okay? Please. Here, um, just give me a second, okay? So the answer is yes, I can do jaw jacking, but I have to, I, oh my God, I have to do something. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. This is me. Uh, what the hell? Oh. Um... I'm sorry, guys. Like this, I, I do want to do jaw jacking. I just, um, okay.
All right. All right, so let's uh, let's do it. Okay, so um All right, let's do some jaw jacking. Have a great weekend everybody. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Jaw Jacking. I am your host, Jerry Guy. We're just straight chilling up in here. And um, I got to do one more small thing. Small, small thing. Sorry. The, the, I just... this this I just got a lot going on. Okay. All right. So I'm Jerry. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. Uh, we had a great Simply Cyber Daily Cyber Threat Briefing, and now it's time for some jaw jacking. Genuinely appreciated. 267 of you beautiful people in here today. Um, let's see. Who's got some questions? Jenny Housley. Look at Jenny Housley dropping bombs. I want to let the Simply Cyber community know first, I recently accepted a position as a Forge curriculum developer with Haiku. Boom, baby. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Thank you for the super chat, obviously, uh, Jenny. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Nick Parker, I did get a haircut yesterday. Thank you for noticing. I feel felt. Genuinely appreciate that. Yeah, Jenny Housley, straight crushing it. Guys, um, super, super pumped um, for Jenny Housley. Great, great professional. Smart, smart professional. Uh, and an absolute delightful person, I might add. Whew, I'm looking forward to the uh, wet run later today. Um, so Khalil Ali is asking about Wild West Hacking Fest. I am speaking. I'm not doing any of the live training. Um, I do appreciate uh, the training that's there. I know, um, I think Eric Capuano and Whitney Champion are doing training there. Um, the training is excellent. But no, I'll arrive on the 18th, uh, about noon uh, local time. So if you're flying in there, I'll be there about then. And then there's like a speaker event uh, that night. And then it's all it's all go. Um, I am going to be bringing my laptop, my mobile um, podcast setup. Um, it will be 6 a.m. Eastern time. So I'll be getting up for that and doing the show. So you'll be getting live from Wild West Hacking Fest. We'll see what's going on, too, because... Um, ACI Learning is going to have a full studio set up there, and they've said that I can use it. Uh, but you know, with 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 live streaming and podcasts and stuff, it's not as simple as to say, "Oh, you have a podcast setup. I'll just sit down and run Simply Cyber." There's a lot of complexity to um, running the show, so we'll see. We'll see what's up. Oh my god, my stomach hurts. Um, Fariz Azari saying, uh, if, is it X's responsibility to tag disinformation as it's just a platform? Is it responsible for what publish others regulation-wise? Just curious. Well, excuse me. Fariz, I would say like because X is so large and so integrated, uh, perfect. Um, like they do have kind of a social responsibility. Like if if I stood up a platform, right, and it wasn't is only used by like eight people, like less of a social responsibility. It is a platform. Um, you know, the tricky thing is where you're saying like this information is bad and this information is good. It gets very subjective, right? Um, so I I don't know. It's really hard to say honestly. And uh, my stomach hurts right now, so it's like preventing me from doing deep thought on on it. Uh, is there a Simply Cyber community meetup at Wild West Hack and Fest? David Robbins is asking. So, David um, and Kimberly went to Wild West Hack and Fest last year. Um, there is not an official Simply Cyber community meetup. However, I will say that Wild West Hack and Fest is so small that, like, it'll it'll inevitably be like a Simply Cyber community meetup because 
it, like we're all in like one big room. You know what I mean? Like you can't not see each other. You can't not bump into each other. Um, maybe, um, if it makes sense, I can try to organize a time where like, Hey, like at 4 PM, let's all meet right here and just like, you know, have a beer or at the, um, there's a steak dinner on the night of the 19th, I believe. Uh, maybe we could all kind of sit at the same table or something like that. Uh, but I'll definitely keep it in mind, David Robbins. It's just that it, because it's such a small, intimate conference, I didn't really think of doing it that way. Like DEF CON is so freaking huge that you need it to be like that. Um, Axiom Brevity, just wanted to say that my security awareness training for my company's board of directors went well. Yes. Straight crushing it, Axiom Brevity. All right. Um, love it, love it, love it. Um, do you have recommendations? What is this? Uh, do you have any recommendations for a good Imperial Stout? Oh, Casually Joseph. <laughs> it, that is a Friday call. Um, yes, I do have a great recommendation for an Imperial Stout. Now you're talking my language. Um, Okay, here we go. Ready? And by the way, like some of these are seasonal and you can get them right now. So very first one is uh, Sierra Nevada Narwhal. Oh boy. I got five of these in my fridge right now downstairs. Oh my God. Okay, right here. This is where you want to start. This is step one. Okay, right here. Step one, step two, step three. <laughs> Dude, this beer is freaking bananas good, okay? It doesn't taste like bananas. It's just really, really good, okay? Oh, and Jesus. Okay, here's my second option. It's like this website knows me. North Coast, if you're uh, familiar with them, Russian Imperial Stout. This is my... You can get this year round. You can only get the Narwhal right now. This beer is amazing, one of my absolute favorite Imperial Stouts out there. Okay. And then just for uh, honorable mention, honorable mention, um, and I haven't seen this in a while, but Stone Brewing, which everybody knows about, makes a Russian Imperial Stout. Yes, I'm over 21. Um, Stone Brewing makes a Russian Imperial Stout that is so good. I haven't seen it in a few years, so I don't know if they're still doing it. It's an annual release. Uh, but, oh my God, those narwhals, bro. <laughs> Thank you for the question, casually, Joseph. All right. All right, what else we got? Oh my God. Old Rasputin is a night-night beer. <laughs> yeah, Taylor, it's so good. I'll drink, I'll drink stouts, um year round. Like I do like IPAs in the summer. I'm not going to have a stout like at the beach. I'm not a fool, but, um, there, there's no time. There's no time in the evening. Okay. Um, Oh, by the way, someone sent me a picture of Deadwood right now and it was covered in snow. I don't know if that's true or not, but, um, the reason I don't live in the Northeast anymore is because I don't like snow. And, um, I have some serious concerns. So this is Deadwood. It's probably not today. Let me see. Let's look at the... Oh, my God. Oh. Um. 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 Um, no. Uh oh. How does it go from 34 to 64? So it looks like it's going to be 45 degrees and rainy when I get there. Not sure I'm digging that, y'all. Yes, exactly, Kimberly. Stop it. Exactly. Guys, I'm not built for cold. <laughs> this 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 vessel that holds my body is not built for cold. I am a, I am a, I am soft when it comes to weather. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if we can get a Deadwood live cam. Let's do this. Webcam. 
Let's look. All right, so this is Friday, 10, 13, 7 a.m. I'm confirming no snow right now. Thank you, whoever suggested that. Who suggested that? Lyle Murden. Thank you, Lyle. Nailing it. Come on. All right, here's the Sturgis live cam. Whatever, I'm not going to make you guys watch that. All right, there we go. Thank God. No snow. It almost turned into a remote a remote event. <laughs> Ooh. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Lazaro, I started journey journaling my cybersecurity journey on LinkedIn and plan to publish a tutorial-based document. Hoping to have it published by today or tomorrow. Hoping the community can check it out. Thank you, Lazaro. Did we just become best friends? Yep. How's the audio, by the way? Uh, thanks for the super chat. Did we just become best friends? Yep. I'm trying to balance the music with my voice with the sound effects. Okay, let me know. I might have to turn the music down a little bit. Um, and by the way, Lazaro. Uh, when you publish that, if you drop a link, um, I'll share it with the community as well and, and um, help help uh, amplify that so more people can find it. Yeah, send the link to the mods. That's probably a better, <laughs> better idea. Um, Darius Cater talking about Canadian weather. NHL season just started for those uh, for those who are NHL fans. Big fan of the NHL. Bruins, obviously, I'm a Bruins fan. <laughs> yes, live looking of me getting ready to go outside. Uh, compliments of uh, Kimberly. Live looking of me going outside in Deadwood. <laughs> Colorado is a really cool town, but but uh, I just can't. It's too cold. Audio good. Thanks, Nicole. So uh, just to kind of share an update. Um, I've been telling you guys a little bit that I've been working on a exposure management course. This may come as news to some of you because I don't talk about it, but I was commissioned by a company to make a cyber uh, security exposure management course. And I've made it and I've delivered all the content. And today is the final day of feedback and revisions from that company. Um, I've made like Sizzler Reels commercials. It's going to go up very soon. Like I would imagine it goes up maybe next week. The company is in uh, Israel, so it's possible that the uh, conflict out there is going to delay some stuff. But just to share with everybody, it is a, it's going to be a free course as far as I know. Uh, anyone will be able to sign up for it. So if you're interested in uh, some of the uh, content I make from an educational perspective, uh, you could giddy up on that. And I will share that when it happens. We might need a couple tables at Deadwood. Yeah, for sure. Never got up there enough to keep up with it, though. Yeah, Justin Rohr. How about a promo on the GRC course? Eric Reim is asking for. I could see that happening pretty soon, Eric. Um, you know, Black Friday is probably uh, like... Black Friday is probably a good day uh, to, to where you might see one. All right. Got to get back to work. Angular, hear you. Oh, man. Uh, ear infection, bro. That sucks. Speedy recovery to you. Um, speedy recovery to you. To, you, to your ear infection. Let's, let's yeet that out of there. Have a good weekend, Angie Yarbrough. Good to see you. Wayback Machine didn't work. Uh, yeah. Definitely appreciate the community. Um, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm tired, guys. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to the weekend. Uh, we got some stuff going on. Kids soccer tomorrow. Um, trying to finish up this uh, deck for this uh, major company that commissioned me to... Um, Come do their cybersecurity awareness training. When I say major company, I'm talking major. Um, I want to see how many employees they have. 
Let me see how many employees they have. I don't want to say the company, but 8,700 employees. So I'm, I'm giving a presentation to 8,700 people uh, next uh, two weeks from now. So, I, you know, I want the deck to be cool, right? I don't want to be looking like a, um, you know, a joke. So I'm super pumped about that. Uh, so ADHD asking about thoughts on the Google cybersecurity cert. I get to say my favorite thing uh, that I always like to say is I've got a video for that ADHD. Let me, let me show you right there. So if you're interested in, all, if you're interested in all my thoughts on this, I'll tell you, and not to like punk you, um, not to punk you, I'll tell you right now, like the TLDR of my thoughts, but just for anyone who's interested, I made a whole, a whole video on it. Okay. Right here. Uh, the TLDR, it's, it's a good, uh, it's a good entry level kind of basic foundational, um, you know, knowledge transfer, more theory than hands-on labs. I don't think you'll get a job based on this alone, but this will give you um, some foundational knowledge to equip you to be able to go forward and learn more, right? Like it's, it's a great foundation to build on top of. That's the TLDR. All right. Uh, Jeffrey's asking, uh, hey, take it easy, Jenny Housley. Um, Jeffrey's asking, I wonder who the top threat actor is during Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, usually during Cybersecurity Awareness Month, you know, we, we focus more on educating on defenses, best practices, and impacts. Um, you know, Carl and accounting, Carl and accounting doesn't care about the difference between Clop ransomware, Medusa, and, you know, vice society. Um, if I had, you know, right now, I would think nation state level threat actors are probably reigning supreme. So I know it's just kind of a fun question, but maybe we could push for uh, flaming donkey to be the top one right now. I do want to say shout out to Dan Reardon, a.k.a. Haircut Fish. He's actually made two new squad emotes. One is Hack the Planet, and one is Welcome to the Party, Pal. Welcome to the party, pal. For the new... Um... Yeah, no, ADHD, it's definitely worth doing, man. It's not It's not a waste of your time. Um, <laughs> Luke Canfield saying that marketing at cybersecurity companies are the advanced persistent threat. That's actually really, really funny. Um, yeah. Oh my God, guys. Yeah, I just got like rot gut right now from too much coffee on an empty stomach. I don't know what's going on. For those, like, for, if you're still here, um, you're, you know, you're a deep cut Cy Simply Cyber community member. That thing I, I doubt, do you guys remember like last Wednesday um, or yeah, last Wednesday, two Wednesdays or two Wednesdays ago, not this week, but last week I came on and I felt weird. And then like Eric Taylor had to come in and like take over the show and stuff like that. I still don't know what that is. I, I'm beginning to suspect that it was stress induced, which is something I've never dealt with before, like a stress induced illness. This is not diagnosed. This is not confirmed. This is just my gut on it. Um, I've for those who don't know, you know, I, 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 I have a lot going on. I always have a lot going on. Um, I'm actually pushing back now. People are wanting to do work with me in December and I'm declining work. Um, so I've got two speaking engagements, uh, besides Charleston keynote, which is amazing. And then this cybersecurity awareness month training for business. That's amazing. And then I'm finishing the cyber one Oh one course. Uh, and those, oh, and Simply CyberCon, we're hosting a conference. So that's what I got going on right now, which is, um, I don't feel stressed out. Like I'm like, I can't handle it, but it is just a lot on my plate. So I think that's what's going on. So I guess consider that a mental health uh, check in on me. That was a, uh, what do they call those? Uh, wellness check on Jerry. Hey, Alana. Good to see you. 
Yeah, the green drink. The oven cleaner drink. <laughs> the body oven cleaner. Uh, it does hit differently. That's why, you know, honestly, that's why I, I launched today with... Um, With Van Morrison, it just, just kind of like breathing. Um, oh, let's do this. Days like this, man. How's that for a song to hit, right? Stress boy. You going to do anything with THM's advent of cyber? So uh, I haven't been asked yet uh, to do that. I will say that last year I did advent of cyber. I have stayed very connected with Try Hack Me. Um, so I hope to be able to, I was actually going to message them as funny as it is. Like they don't really spin it up until like mid November, um, reaching out to content creators and stuff like that. But thanks BSEC. I'll actually, um, message my contact over there and, and just remind them that I'm interested. I only did one video last year. I want to do two or three this year. Oh my God. What am I saying? Like, literally this is how insane I am. Like, I'm like, Oh, I'm stressed too much work. And now I'm like, Oh, I want to do more. Um, so yeah, I do want to do Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber. I think it's a great, a great uh, experience. It's a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, I, I will do it. And I'm only going to do one, even though I want to do more than one. I've got to manage myself. Joseph says, hey, Gerald, computer science student currently enrolled in my junior year. I was a cook wondering if I should put all my time into Differ or Net Plus and get my foot in the door as a network engineer. Uh, well, so, okay. So first of all, Joseph, Differ is like a field of focus in cybersecurity and Net Plus is like a foundational cert, right? So a couple of things I would say. One, um, as a computer science student, you absolutely should have a networking course in your curriculum. If you don't, um, I'm sorry to say that, that that's a major gap in a computer science degree. So assuming that you have a networking course the net plus isn't really going to add anything to you because you should understand the full OSI stack and, you know, uh, TCP, UDP, how the internet works, IPv4, DNS, all that crap, right? So I don't think you need to focus on net plus. Now for DFIR, if that's where you want to go, uh, network engineer as a role is different. You're not going to really use differ skills in network engineer work. Now, getting uh, your foot in the door as a network engineer, that's definitely a great idea. That'll definitely serve you. Um, um, and the only thing I can say is, uh, you know, individually speaking, uh, differ. It's hard to tell if that's your jam or not. But I do want to share something amazing with you. Okay, Joseph. And this, by the way, guys, this is why I think it's worth staying for jaw jacking because things come up that I... I just have so much going on that I like forget to tell you guys sometimes. So I had a phone call with a woman named Jessica Hyde yesterday from Hex, Hexdoria. Let me, let me show you this. Okay. This is Jessica. Oh, hold on. This is Jessica Hyde. Okay. This is Sans website. Okay. Jessica is a, when I say top tier digital forensics and in, in, incident responder, when I say, when I say top tier, I'm not joking. She is the go-to in digital forensics. Now she specializes in mobile, but she's done networking, endpoints, Linux, Windows. She's done them all. Okay. Now, why am I telling you this? Well, I've asked Jessica to come on Simply Cyber Live on November 9th, 2023. So just a few weeks from now, and she's agreed. And the key, I said, Jessica, we could talk about a million different things, but I would love to talk about, I want the name of the show to be, is DFIR entry level? That's the entire show. She said, I love it, Jerry. Let's go. So Joseph, I, I hope you consume all the Simply Cyber community content, but that video, November 9th, is undeniably going to have major value for you. Okay. So please, and anyone who's interested in DFIR. When will you get the Wild West Hacking Fest to be further south? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny, Jeffrey. Um, 
John and uh, the Black Hills crew actually did Wild West Hackenfest in Reno, but it's just too much. It, it, like John said, it was like too complicated to like have these different ones. He was going to do an East Coast Wild West Hackenfest, and they've decided that they're actually going to just do. Um, they're going to complement other conferences, right? So maybe like he didn't say ShmooCon, but like just to use a East Coast one as an example, like ShmooCon is there, and then like uh, Black Hills Anti Siphon will do something bigger at ShmooCon, right? So they won't host their own conference outside of Deadwood going forward. At least that was the disposition um, at at Wild West Hacking Fest last year. Um, how much and often do you run, Jose Alfredo? So Jose Alfredo asking about my running. So a couple of things about that, Jose. I haven't run in probably two months, which really upsets me. I've been so making excuses, but I've been so busy that I haven't found time to run. I love running. I love running. Um, and I'm trying to make it a priority again in my mind. Um, like I want to run today, but then these, these deliverables I have, I feel like you know, 45 minutes of running is like 45 minutes of work I could have done, um, which obviously I don't want to kill myself. Uh, so like trying to avoid that. Um, but I will tell you when I'm running normally, um, Jose, I run uh, typically three days a week, right? Monday, like say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 5k is my, my pretty standard run. Like right now I haven't run in two months. I, I could go out and run like a, a 5k like, e like easily. Right. Um, my times are probably like right now. Cause I haven't been running in a while. I could probably run like a comfortable eight thirty five K. And then I typically like to do a long run on Sunday, long being anywhere from like, say, um, five to eight miles, unless I'm training for a marathon, half marathon, chill and take a break. Dream logic says, yeah. Catch me outside. How about that? Yeah. Catch me outside. So dream logic. There we go. Give you the woo. Do I have a podcast version? Benjamin Gonzalez asks. Yes. That's, there's another thing that I do a really crap job of um, telling people about. But yeah, um, Benjamin, you can catch all of this content right after the show ends. It, the audio gets ripped down and published. And uh, you can see here's October 12th, October 11th, October 10th. Yeah. So, this program, the morning threat briefing gets published uh, right after the stream, not right after, but like pretty, pretty quickly after the stream ends. So you can subscribe to that and consume it. I don't really, um, I don't really push it or do anything like that. I use transistor. Look at, and this is like live showing you the metrics. So we get about 400, three, 400 downloads of the podcast every day. So again, I don't know. I, like, here's the reality. Many of you may know this already, but I'll just share it. Like I do the, I pay a monthly fee for the audio podcast. I do it um, just as a courtesy to the community. I don't, I'm not trying to monetize that. I, I, I It's just like people are like, Hey, I can't watch YouTube at the gym. I'm trying to mow the lawn. I can't have it on while I'm driving. So I created this as an audio rip podcast to serve those people. And then that's all I do with it. I don't, I don't really move forward with it, but hopefully that serves you, Benjamin. Um, Jeffrey, we need an extended jaw jacking on black Fridays for deals that you think we should look into. Oh, that's a wicked fun idea. Jeffrey. I'm in. Wait, hold on. I'm in. Uh, what would be it? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. What day is black Friday this year? My endorphins are down, I guess. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to not breathe. Um, I'm just trying to like chill, <laughs> Nick. Uh, so actually, um, Black Friday, I will actually be at a um, a relative's house. I go there every year for Thanksgiving. But you know what? F it. I can bring my mobile studio and um, we we could do a jaw jacking session. I don't even know. Normally, I don't even do the daily threat briefing on Black Friday. I don't even know if the daily podcast is there. Uh, I'll take that for action. Let's see. 
Uh, oh, I no, I, I appreciate that, Rian. And yeah, I, I do feel appreciated. Don't get me wrong. I don't feel like I'm uh, exploited or taken advantage. I just, I don't know, man. Like, I get excited. I, I love cybersecurity. I love serving this community. I love work. Um, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to manage myself, frankly. I'm trying to be practical. Yeah, get it to Dirk, getting going. Yeah. All right. Hey, it's 930. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Um, I think, oh, hey, just as a final update, Mrs. Ozier, um, the, the studio is done. Like Mrs. Ozier's work is done in the studio. I have a TV that I need to mount into the uh, built-ins. But after that, um, it's like, move the furniture in and let's go. Uh, so uh, I haven't made a mobile studio video, Nick Barker, but I certainly could. It's just, that's one of those things, Nick. Um, I, like, j just even thinking about it, that's giving me like, um, I don't have a mobile studio video. I could, I could certainly show it, but uh, I don't have one right now. Uh, Joseph, any advice on career pathways to differ than I've been following the career? Yeah, I mean, Joseph, I I, I I didn't work in differ. I've done differ work, but I haven't worked in it. So I can't really just that November 9th one is going to be your best bet. Hey, Cyber Kill Jane. Good to see you, Jessica. Very cool. All right, guys, I'm going to boogie out of here. Um, thank you all so very much. I will uh, share updates with you uh um you know what I, I don't do the youtube posts very often but i will um probably snap a couple and post them on youtube or something um and you know just share that with you guys or on discord whatever guys i'm jerry thanks for hanging for the jaw jacking be well have a wonderful weekend congratulations to everybody crushing it congratulations everyone that will be crushing it i'll see you guys in deadwood next week and uh, yeah, be well. Thanks, everybody. Until next time, stay secure. Oh, wait a minute. I'll see you at 4 p.m. <laughs> donkey. I'm the flaming donkey. I'll see you at 4 p.m. for the wet run. Come on out. Support the channel. Support the, uh, the con. It's going to be a good time. See you guys at 4 p.m. Eastern today. Now I'm out. Later. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed that content. Keep the cybersecurity train going by connecting with the other Simply Cyber community resources. We have the Discord server that's lively and always keeps the conversation going. You can connect with me directly on LinkedIn. And also every single weekday morning on the Simply Cyber channel, we're doing live daily cyber threat briefings, 8 a.m. Eastern time, as well as Thursday at 4.30 p.m. We're doing live stream interviews with industry experts and we produce videos that we push out every Wednesday morning. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. I hope you enjoyed the content and we'll see you there.